I'm gonna Pepsi shot. I'm gonna drink Pepsi. But man, this is pretty sweet. This, <laughs> this video brought to you not by Pepsi. This video brought to you by Dylan Cramping. <laughs> <laughs> but so um, as, a, as a big lifter or R lifter, you cramp. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, All the time. Um, welcome to this week's J1D. So today we're going to be talking about squat stance. Now this question has been brought to us. So um, this was kind of directed a little bit towards myself. If you know me as a squatter, you'd know that I squat quite wide. By quite um, wide meaning like outside the width of the, of the plates. Yeah. Live squat <laughs> that's, no, it's not quite that bad, but it's getting close. So this was brought to us by Benny Dolan. So Benjamin Dolan, we're answering your question today. Um, but we're gonna go a bit general about this just so we're not just be going, hey man, you should squat like this based on these things. We're gonna teach you in this video where we recommend you start off squatting, how we recommend squatting high bar and low bar. We're not gonna go outside of that. Like if we get the specialty bars, we could spend, we could be here literally all day. Um, so just high bar, low bar, um, since they're kind of the different ways you may be squatting in competition. And from there, as you develop how you can figure out if you should be moving wider, moving narrower, getting more knee flexion, less knee flexion. So to start off, Dylan, your recommendations when it comes to kind of the beginner when it comes to high bar, low bar. So if you've never squatted before, mm. or you're very new to squatting, Squatting with a medium sort of stance, so like just outside shoulder width or at shoulder width, depending on your build, mm -hmm. it's probably the best way to start. Mm -hmm. And then as you develop, you will move from there. Mm -hmm. But having that medium medium stance just outside shoulder width is probably the best way to do it. Yeah, and, and I agree. And it's the, the, also kind of to elaborate on that a bit, just outside shoulder width, and I'd also say try and have an even knee and hip angle. So whatever angle you see happening at your knee, try and create that same angle happening at your hip. Yeah, because you don't want to be bending over and then the knees break. You kind yeah. of want them... You want an even position. Yeah. And the which reason... Is, yeah, sorry. So yeah, which is something you will develop as you, as you go on. Mm. You're not going to get that first day, but yeah. it's something you want to be conscious of. Yeah. And the reason for that is trying to aim for reasonably even development. Like... You don't want to be taking something that's going to be kind of sitting back more, being more hamstring, glute dominant, lower back dominant, um, right from go. And you don't want to be doing anything that's too quad dominant or anything like that. Because if you're just starting, you haven't, like, you can't be like, oh, my quads are weak, so I sit back. You haven't trained your quads. You don't, you, it's not that they're weak, they're untrained. And there's a very big, yeah, there's a very big difference between yeah. those two things. And, like, for me, coming into lifting, like the kind of the way I figured this out is I came into lifting going, oh, like my shoulders are so weak, I have weak shoulders. Yeah. It's just like I hadn't done any overhead pressing, I hadn't done any like significant work on shoulders. Yeah. And I spent my first couple of years being like, oh, like my shoulders suck, my shoulders are so weak, like there's no way I could ever take a bench that's going to use my shoulders that much. Yeah. Then all of a sudden I actually start doing some like dedicated shoulder work and then it's like, oh, I can street press 130. Oh, maybe I'm not that, maybe my shoulders aren't that weak. And it's just it, learning to use the muscle. Yeah, it's just learning to use the muscle and seeing how they develop after a couple of years of yeah, putting in the time and smashing it. Um, so that's why we're talking about that medium stance, even like it's, it's literally medium stance, medium points of extension, medium everything because you want to give everything some stimulus to develop. Then after a couple of years, you can see, okay, what's growing? What, like, what actually are my strengths? What actually are my weaknesses? Then you can, you can even look at that and go, okay, from here, I either need to do extra work to address weaknesses, or I can take a stance that's going to mitigate my weaknesses and take advantage of strengths. So this is where it gets complicated. Um, so Dylan, pick one out of the hat. Like when you get a muscle that you're starting to notice is becoming particularly strong, how you would take advantage of that with a squat? Uh, so if you got if you got strong quads, yeah, you want to utilize your quads a bit more. Yeah, you don't want to be going stupid wide stance because you want to utilize a lot of your lower back glutes, hamstrings more often. Yeah. So by squatting with your with a slightly narrower stance mm. or a medium stance to begin with, mm. having a little bit more knee travel as well. Mm. 
it's hard to utilize your massive fucking quads. Yeah, and that's absolutely where right. I go with that as well. And kind of taking advantage <clears throat> of that extra knee travel. Like some people are going to be like, oh, like you don't want some knee travel in a squat. It's going to make it harder for you to hit depth. And there how, is some truth to that. Having knee travel but, is not bad. It's yeah. only bad if your heels are coming off the ground. Then yeah. you're, putting, you're putting load in stupid areas. Yeah. So if you're really mobile on these, like Olympic weightlifters, their, their heels are on the ground, but their knees are fucking almost on the ground as well. Yeah, and you know what? You don't see Olympic weightlifters really struggling to hit depth. <laughs> Like, just, just saying. Like, I've seen weightlifters with their ball sack on the ground, <laughs> and they're doing just fine. Yeah, and it's going to be that type of squat you're going to want to take advantage of if you are really quad dominant. And actually, probably looking more so towards weightlifters who are going to be high bar position, high knee travel. They're probably going to be a good example of what you should be aiming for. And I'm not meaning that that means you have to be like bolt upright, high bar as hell, but you're going to have um, tendencies that are kind of somewhere between that traditional powerlifting squat and an Olympic weightlifting squat. Yeah. And that kind of is also another point, as Dylan noted, having that higher knee travel, um, you're probably gonna end up with a bit more of an upright torso, and that's not a bad thing. Because what we're looking at from there is, okay, if you are really quad dominant, and you are getting that knee travel, it's likely that your quads are gonna be able to take more weight than what your glutes, lower back, hamstring is going to be able to extend into. So keeping that extension to um, not necessarily a minimum, but to less of an emphasis than if you were squatting with a more low bar, more even point, it's going to be advantageous. Mm. Um, and kind of moving from there, so I'll, I'll address um, having higher adductor growth. And there's a very good reason why I'm going to, we're going to move from <coughs> someone who's Quad dominant to adductor dominant. I'm adductor dominant. <laughs> How do you squat? Quads or hamstrings? Oh, fuck Adductors. Yeah. yeah. People are like, the fuck? And then they the, actually see those me big squat. big blokes in the middle. Yeah. You see me squat and you see me adductors. Like, oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, like, hmm, what muscle is activated? No, okay. Yeah. Adductors. And this is probably something that um, I think is re a really common misinterpretation when it comes to squat width and activation. Um, I hear a lot of people talking about squatting wide um, to turn on a lot of hamstring and sitting back to turn on a lot of hamstring. If you're squatting really wide, yes, you'll be using your hamstrings, you will not be using them a whole lot. Um, and that's just based on the way the hamstring kind of pulls. You're probably gonna end up using more adductor kind of inside yeah. leg hamstring and less of the outside of the leg. So. Are you going to take advantage of hamstring strength with a wider stance, more sat back? Absolutely. It's going to be there. Is it going to be a ton of it? No. If we're talking about someone who is really solely, really hamstring dominant, you're probably not actually going to want to be super, super wide. Um, like a really great example of a hamstring dominant squatter, um, Marissa Ender, look her up, monstrous hamstring strength, monstrous glute strength, um, less adductor, narrow, sits back like crazy really, really hamstring dominant. Um, so with that wide stance, you're gonna find you're gonna be more adductor, inside hamstring, gluten hip. So the reason why you'd move to a stance like this is if you're seeing that adductor growth, and also if you might be potentially uh, longer limbed, um, it's gonna be good just because it's gonna minimize um, the angle of the knee and angle of the hip. Like if you've got really long femurs, the angle at lower back and angle at knee are gonna be much more acute. So by moving into a wider stance, it changes the point of leverage. So this is gonna be a really poor way of showing this, but it's the best I can do. If you move to here, those angles are gonna increase versus moving out. So it's gonna minimize the amount you need to move forward and minimize the amount your knees need to move forward. So it's gonna keep them in a mechanically stronger position. So if you're someone whose adductors are growing really well, or you notice that you're ending up really bent over and your knees are at quite a sharp angle, moving into a wider stance might be really advantageous to you. Um, I wouldn't generally recommend going into high bar with this stance, just because that's gonna encourage higher knee travel. And when you're wide and getting lots of knee travel, it just puts really weird torque on your hips mm. and on your knees. So. As I said, longer limbed, adductors are growing, wind that up, put a bit lower, 
and just try and keep an even stance, an even sort of points of leverage with that again. And you can see some really, really great development. Um, God, Another really cool. thing that I like to bring up as well yeah. is squatting in sleeves and wraps for yeah. stance, which is really, really big and which I've noticed the most in the last year of yeah. um, my squatting. Um, every time I squat in sleeves, I'll have that just outside medium stance. Mm. The sleeves give good support. They give yeah. me good warmth. They give me a good, you know, base, and you know, they provide. They help. Well. Yeah, they help, they help big time. But when I get into wraps, yeah, you can go out a bit more. I prefer to go about a bit wider, yeah. just because I can sit my hips in a bit more. Mm. And because of the way we wrap, we've got a video on that as well, which yeah. is fantastic. Um, the way we wrap, it you, you're not gonna cave. Your knees aren't really gonna cave. Yeah. Just because of the, the line of the wrap. Yeah. Um, so when you're sitting in more in wraps, you can you can hit depth a little bit nicer. Yeah. And you don't have to worry so much about your knees going left or right. Yeah. And as I was saying before, like it's a position where because you've minimized that angle you lean forward, the issue you're gonna have by going a bit wider, which is gonna be around that knee stability and hip stability, those wraps help stabilize those points. So you can go a bit wider and not run into issues of your knees moving around as Dill said, or your hips moving around as much, and you can move a bit more comfortably. And there's been a lot of powerlifters I've spoken to who have been like ultra advanced lifters, and you'll hear them say, sleeves, I'll squat an inch a side in. Yeah. Wraps, I move it out a little bit. Yeah. And that's super common. Um, I guess moving to the kind of the last of the major leg muscle groups to mm -hmm. kind of see, we kind of, I kind of touched on this just before, someone who's really hamstring dominant. Yeah. How would you recommend that they kind of squat? Definitely low bar. Yeah. <laughs> low bar is shit. 100% yeah. yeah. low bar. Yeah. Like I've, I've got some pretty meaty quads, mm. but my hamstrings are very dominant. Yeah. But at the same time, I squat low bar with a just outside uh, yeah. medium stance. Not stupid wide, are you? No, not like me. <laughs> so I can utilize both hamstrings, glutes, and quads. Yeah. So finding that middle ground where if your whole leg is growing, utilize all of it. Yeah. So like I'll still utilize my adductors quite well. They grow pretty well. Utilize my quads. We're having all, good... all of him grows, so he just stayed medium. <laughs> yeah. <What the> fuck? <laughs> yeah. He has got the mushroom. Yeah. Um, and they are magic. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, like. So he's just stayed there, but um, it's one of those things like, as you said, so for quad dominance, knees forward, potentially high bar, like adductor dominant, low bar, wider, minimizing that travel, hamstring dominant, low bar, sit back with that and just like mm -hmm. load up those hamstrings. Like, it comes down to something that I really like to talk about. Um, which is genetics around powerlifting. And I hear a lot, like there's definitely people out there with good genetics and bad genetics. But at the same time, most of the time, there's a lot of people out there who kind of sit in the middle who say they have bad genetics. Like really bad genetics is just low responder to training, low responder to adaptation. If you're able to get response to stimulus, you've got good genetics. Like that's really it. Like Dylan is a great example. Like his body loves to grow. He gets great response to adaptation. It's not that like, oh, he was born fucking really big. It wasn't he was born big, it's that his body was like, yep, yeah, we can just keep growing. Yeah. If you're getting On 3,000 calories. <laughs> like, if you're getting any sort of decent adaptation, you can be a really good power for it. Like, fuck off with like limb lengths and shit like that. There's always gonna be a way to take advantage of that. Like if you've, as I kind of mentioned before, if you've got longer legs, like I am like by leverages, not really built to squat. Like I've squatted over 330 kilos. Like, and it's based on me going, okay, based on my leverages, this is how I need to squat. Widen it up, sit down into it, take advantage of having that adductors that grow. Yeah. Like, and that's the way you have to look at it. Like, you're, oh, my hamstrings go. You don't be like, oh, my quads are weak. It's like, no, my hamstrings go. I'm going to take advantage of my hamstrings. Fucking make them move the weight. Mm -hmm. So, like, as Dylan was saying, he's stuck with that medium stance that most kind of beginners would stay with yeah. for a while. Just, Just because with, everything grew. <clears throat> yeah, because his body went, I'll adapt. Yeah. So, kind of, I think the big takeaway here is, 
like once you've had a few years in that medium stance, take a step back, look at the way you're developing, be like, hey, this feels like it's working really well. Like I, my point of advantage in my squat is my quad strength. Yeah. Get them a little bit forward, see how that feels. Like spend three to six months on it, see how things develop and then retest. Because that's what most of powerlifting is, it's going, hey, let's see how this works. Give it a bit of time, come out to the side. Hey, that worked really well. Let's keep doing that. And if you're a bodybuilder, do the exact opposite of what you're good at because that way you'll address your weaknesses. Absolutely, and that's, that's something we should also probably address now mm -hmm. is just because something's growing really well doesn't mean you fuck off everything else. Yeah. Like, I know that you've had, like right now, just talking about this from a purely like outside of just squat stance perspective, right. you're working on a lot of things that to you are your weaknesses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like that's how you should spend most of your off season. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so kind of just to quickly recap, um, stay in that medium stance for the first couple of years, your powerlifting, play around with the stance a little bit. Yeah, don't, don't go too wide or too narrow. Yeah. Like give it maybe an inch yeah, either slight way. adaptation, slight. You want to, yeah. Like as you grow as well, like if you put on 30 kilos in three years, your narrow stance is still going to be a narrow, or sorry, your medium stance is still going to be your medium stance, but still, it might be literally two inches wider on the ground. So yeah. stick with what your um, body is giving, giving you mm. and adapt and work with that. Yeah. And as you said, like once you do get to a point where you feel like, okay, I need to change this up, change up by little bits, inch out, inch in. Like, it's going to sound funny. I started off wider than where I am now. I started off max width in my lift. It was ridiculous. Um, like if you see the way that guys squat in like full suit equipment, that's how I squatted raw. It was not a good idea. That they squat narrow comparatively. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I've brought it in inch by inch over time. Yeah. You don't want to make big changes a little bit of time. Yeah. But um, anyway, guys, that's today's J1D on the squat stance. I'm just going to move a little bit into genetics, which we can get into at a different time. Yep. Um, we'll release a video on that in the future because that's a really, really interesting topic. Um, yeah, send in your questions. Thanks, Penny, for sending in your question about the squat stance. I hope that kind of answered what you were kind of looking for and um, your kind of question around if you should potentially try a wider stance. Um, and we'll see you guys next time.